The Zippo lighter was first created by George Blaisdell in 1933 and its design has remained largely unchanged ever since. Each lighter is composed of a metal housing called the case. Opening the lid of the case creates the signature clink sound and reveals a piece of the Zippo lighter called the insert. Closing the lid creates the clunk sound. At the base of the lighter you can see some more information about its manufacture. Each Zippo is stamped with a letter and a number representing the month and the year that the lighter was created. F is the sixth letter of the alphabet, so we know that this Zippo left the production line in June 2015. Let's take a closer look at the insert, which can be removed simply by pulling it up from the case. These small bulges on either side of the insert ensure a snug fit. At the bottom of the insert, we have a felt pad kept in place with a screw. There's a hole in this felt which can be used either to store spare flints or it can also be used as a fill hole. Alternatively, the felt pad can be lifted up in order to fill the lighter. Inside the insert, we find a synthetic cotton wool like material called rayon. This material acts as a reservoir soaking up the fuel. To fill the lighter, we turn the assembly upside down, insert the nozzle of a fuel can and squeeze until the rayon is completely saturated with fuel. While Zippo lighters are often called petrol or gasoline lighters, the fuel it uses is actually a specially designed petroleum derivative made for use in lighters. You don't want to breathe in actual gasoline fumes. Snaking in between the rayon balls, you'll find a long piece of cotton called the wick. The wick is reinforced with strands of copper wire to maintain rigidity. Fuel is drawn from the rayon material up the wick where it's consumed by the flames. Earlier I mentioned the screw that keeps the felt of the insert in place. This piece actually has a much more important function. If we take a look inside the metal pipe, you can see that a long spring is attached to the screw. We can remove the screw and place a piece of flint inside the tube. The flint will emerge at the top of the insert, where it's then impeded from coming out by a wheel. The wheel is knurled, meaning it has a distinctive diamond pattern etched into the surface. When the wheel is turned, the friction from the knurling chips away at the flint, creating sparks. The spring under the flint ensures that a firm connection between the flint and the wheel is maintained even as the size of the flint is worn down. Sparks are thrown into the middle of the insert's top, which is called the wind guard. The Zippo is advertised as a windproof lighter. While it is possible to blow one out, as you can see with this demonstration that I've made, it isn't exactly easy to do. Inside the wind guard, we can see the top of the wick. Since the sparks from the flint are very hot, they will ignite the fluid on the wick, creating a flame. If we close the cap on the Zippo lighter, the oxygen supply will be cut and the flame is extinguished. That brings us to my favourite part of the Zippo lighter's design, its ingenious lid system that creates that iconic clink clunk sound. The lid of a Zippo lighter is quite unusual. You can turn the Zippo completely upside down and the lid will not budge, but if you apply just a small amount of force then suddenly the lid will pop open. Once the cap of the Zippo lighter is open, it will not close again unless a certain amount of force is applied in the other direction. So how does this work? Well, we can see here that the Zippo lighter is actually just connected to the case with a simple hinge. However, next to the hinge, we have a rotating arm, which is called the cam. When the Zippo lighter is closed, the cam sits straight up and is pushed against a metal tab, which is connected to the lid. When a small force is applied to the lid, the cam pushes against this tab, preventing the lid from opening. A piece of metal called a tension spring sits under the flat bottom of the cam, which keeps it in place. However, if a stronger force is applied to the lid, the tension spring bends out of the way, the cam can now freely rotate and the lid can move with it. The tension spring snapping back into position is what creates that clink sound. Now that the lid is open, the cam will prevent the lid from closing. The tension spring is now pushing in the opposite direction of the cam. However, once again, if enough force is applied to the lid, the cam will push the tension spring out of the way, which will allow it to rotate again, and the lid can snap closed, creating the clunk sound. My name is Rob Dickinson. I make animations about how things work. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.